Bernard, as a physicist, cosmologist, uh, someone who has followed the, uh, I'd say the leading edge of uh, at least the philosophy of cosmology over the last uh, four decades, um, how do you deal with the question of not only life in the universe, but the possibility of uh, intelligences uh, beyond uh, that which we find on Earth? Well, of course, we now have, we still don't know whether there is any intelligence outside Earth in this universe. But all one can say is that the evidence is, seems to be going in the direction that it is very likely that there is intelligence, uh, intelligence elsewhere, certainly in the galaxy. You know, there was the famous Drake equation, which was supposed to tell us how many intelligent civilizations there would be in the galaxy at, at any one time. And, but, and that equation depends on lots of parameters, lots of probabilities which have to be multiplied together. Yeah. And the, how many stars and how many stars have got planets and how many planets have got the right sort of temperature and chemical composition and how many of those were going to have life evolving. And the fact of the matter is that nobody knew. But what we do know now, we have much more evidence as to how many planetary systems there are. And we now know that planets, solar systems are hugely abundant. And, and even Earth-like planets we now know exist. So my personal hunch is that probably life is very abundant indeed. I mean, even within the galaxy. But we don't know that for sure because we've not yet made any contact with, with such extraterrestrial intelligences. But it, it links in an interesting way to the anthropic principle because if you're saying the universe is, is fine-tuned for, for life, yeah. does that mean that you expect that life should be abundant, should life be everywhere? And it doesn't need to imply that. I mean, in fact, one could argue that the anthropic principle would actually require life to be relatively rare. How, how, how would that follow? Uh, maybe on the grounds that if, if we were too close to each other, we would be interfering with each other and uh, <laughs> be too, you know, the civilizations would be battling it out all the time. But, I mean, Carter himself had a, a, a rather surprising aunt's argument which said that we should be we could be unique in the whole universe. And his argument... Brandon Carter who... Brandon coined Carter the, who coined the word and... The uh, anthropic principle. And his argument... Uh, I'll give you the yeah, argument. Yeah. It's simply that if there is some time scale on which life is going to evolve on a planet, now we don't know how to calculate that, but we know on our planet it happens to be of order of a few billion years. In other words, it's comparable to the age of the planet, yeah. which is a rather surprising coincidence that life has arisen roughly halfway through the history of the planet. Now, why should that be? Carter has an argument. He said, well, let's assume the time scale for a, the life to arise. Let's assume that's been calculated. It could be, in principle, much less than the age of the universe, in which case life will be everywhere, and that's clearly not the case because it isn't observed. It could just happen that it's the same as the age of the universe, in which case it's a remarkable coincidence. But it could also be that it's much longer than the age of the universe, 10 billion years. But if the universe is, is infinite or very large, that doesn't matter because uh, somewhere by chance it will have arisen in a, in a, within 10 to the 10th years. So Carter actually argued that life could be actually unique within the universe, within our own visible universe which rather turns the anthropic argument on its head. Now, I personally don't like that conclusion, but whichever conclusion you come to, either where we're unique in the universe or we're just part of, a, of an extended um, galactic civilization, if you like, or even cosmic civilization, I mean, either way, it's, it's of, of great importance. It's, it will be of supreme importance. Certainly, the, the answer to these questions, there's, there's no uninteresting answer. Any mm, answer mm, you mm. get is, is startling and powerful and changes our whole uh, worldview. But if, if we were unique uh, because of this long time, then that means that if we evolved an order of magnitude 10 billion years, just to round it out, and it could be a thousand times more, then we are one in a thousand, a tenth of a percent, uh, on the leading edge. Now that flies against the, 
the modern theory of mediocrity that we are where we should be in some expected normal distribution and we're not the center of things. But if we're the first or one in a thousand, that's, that, that yes, seems strange. Yes, this distribution being the life, yeah, the yeah, time yeah. scale for oh, which right, right, for right. life to evolve. So, yeah. but, but we're then on the, the first leading edge. I mean, a very, very small part of that curve. Yes, but I have to say this isn't my own favored view. No, right, my right, favor, right. I personally think that intelligent life yeah. in, the, in the galaxy But you will have be no abandoned. evidence. I have no direct evidence for in, it. In fact, there mm. is there is evidence of the absence of that. We've, that's not necessarily, certainly not dispositive, but that's the best evidence we have. We look, there's no structures, there's no anything that we would look at. As well, there's the famous Fermi Hart paradox, which yes. says we don't seem, we don't have any evidence of ever right. having been visited, but that's another issue, and uh, <laughs> one could argue about that. But but you believe that uh, uh, from uh, uh, fine tuning and the anthropic principle, you would lead to or to believe that in intelligence is, if not, if not uh, totally um, rampant throughout the universe, at least is, is present in many, many conditions. It clearly isn't rampant throughout the universe, yeah. but the point is with a hundred billion stars in our galaxy, in our galaxy, you only need one in the, yeah. even if it's just one in a million or, yeah. you're still going to have lots of civilizations, extraterrestrial civilizations. and. Uh, I don't know that's the case, but I'm, and it's, it's not required by the anthropic principle in any sense that there have to be you know, lots and lots of civilizations, but I just personally would lay bets that that will turn out to be the case, that we are not unique, I mean, even within the galaxy.